All right, here we go. Yo, been here, as if it'd be anybody else. Today, we're doing something that I have been putting off for a while, but it needs to be done. We are starting from the ground up. So, let's get to it. So, just to get everybody up to speed with what's going on here, I've been using Home Assistant for like the better part of a year, and that was in my old apartment. Now, I've recently just moved into this house. Because of that, I'm taking it as an opportunity to start from the ground up. Some of the stuff I had in my apartment is gonna be recycled, and you're gonna see it come back. But if I bring it back, I'm gonna make a video about it, because I wanna walk you guys through every piece of my home automation system, starting with the base piece, and that is Raspberry Pi 3 running Home Assistant. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail on this video. I've already covered most of these steps in earlier videos, and I don't think there's anything new here. This is more like a here's what I'm doing montage. Welcome, command please. Hello, Moshi. Command please. This predates Alexa by a lot. So before I blank everything, the first thing I'm gonna do is to copy the SD card off my Raspberry Pi. So I have my old configuration if I want it. I hate how hard these are to get out, by the way. Are you kidding me? Haha, did it. Not terrible. So, you probably already know this, but copying data off a Linux partition on a Windows computer can be a real pain. Thankfully, there's an awesome app called Disk Internals Linux Reader that lets you copy the files off an SD card, no problem. Open this, do a quick select all here, save. Good enough, next. While it's working on that, I'll go ahead and open Chrome and I'll go to the Raspberry Pi website and go to downloads, Raspbian, download zip. Now that that is finally done, I'm gonna go ahead and extract the image file from that zip file, and then wait some more. Now that that's done, I'll go ahead and open Win32 Disk Imager. I will select the SD card I want to install the new image of Raspbian on, which is K, and then I will select the disk image and go ahead and hit right, and then, Wait some more. No, no. Two large one topping pizzas. I don't know my freaking Domino's password. Dang. Okay, now that that's done, I'll hit OK and then exit. And now we're ready to start the Raspberry Pi. Take my SD card out of the computer, pull that out, stick it inside my power, and now we'll plug it in. Have this nice thing green blinking light means we are good. So I'm gonna do things a little bit differently this time. Instead of running my Raspberry Pi wired, I'm actually gonna run it wirelessly because Raspberry Pi 3s can do that really easily. Now you might be asking, Ben, why are you plugging in your Raspberry Pi to an ethernet cable when you just said you're gonna run it wirelessly? Well, that's because I need to access it the first time to set up the wireless information. Now, I know what you're thinking, Ben, just plug in the HDMI port and use a keyboard and set it manually. And you could do that. But I prefer to do everything from the command line interface. To me, it's just a little easier and who knows, maybe you don't have a keyboard or something laying around. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is to figure out what the new IP address of my Raspberry Pi is. It might be the same because I still have the same router, but I'll go ahead and check it. My favorite way is to use an app called Fing on Android, but I'm sure there's a million. It just scans your network for various devices and it's super handy at picking up IP addresses for things on your local network. Anyway, okay, so now connect to my Raspberry Pi. Oops, not that one. And connect to my Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes to accept the new fingerprint. And then I will log in for the first time with the default username and password, Pi. Okay, so I'm in. So the first thing I'll do, sudo raspy-config, expand the file system, user password, Let's see, I'll go ahead and set up the time zone. East Coast, finish. Yes, reboot now. Okay, so I will give it a couple minutes there to reboot. So now that's been a few minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and restart the session and then log back in. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and set up wireless networking. To do that, it's pretty straightforward. sudo iwlist wlan0 scan. This command will scan for any local wireless networks. I kind of already know mine, so I don't really need to do this. I'm just showing you how you can search for them. Once you know the SSID and the password of the wireless network you want to connect to, and you make sure your Pi can see it, you type this command, which is sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash wpa, wpa underscore supplicant forward slash wpa underscore supplicant dot config. 
I just got this. Ooh. Hey you, how's it going? Man, well, putting in the hours, I guess. I'm sorry that's so late. Okay, if you had to choose between pizza and cookout, what would you choose? Cookout, okay, well, I guess I will run out and go get cookout, and alrighty, bye. Okay, gotta get cookout, but real fast. Use the command sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash wpa underscore supplicant forward slash wpa underscore supplicant dot config c1f, and then hit enter. Okay, so go down to the bottom of this and type the command, or paste the command, as shown here. Except in the SSID field, I'm going to type the name of my network and then my Wi-Fi password. Now that that's done, I'll save this by hitting Control X and then Y and then Enter. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and restart the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to say sudo reboot and then hit Enter. As it's restarting, I'm going to pull the Ethernet cable out of my Pi. If everything goes okay, it should automatically connect to my Wi-Fi network and I should be able to see it. No problem. If that doesn't work, something went wrong and I'll probably have to connect my Ethernet cable and probably see that I typed my password in wrong or something. Okay, good news. So a quick network scan showed that I have another Raspberry Pi on my network, which is technically the same one, just a different IP address. Because I'm using a different network adapter, which has a different MAC address, which my router doesn't recognize, so it assigned a new IP address. So I'll go ahead and connect to this thing again just kidding, that was the wrong IP address. Yep, and then I'll hit save, and then if I hit open, it'll connect. And it'll say it doesn't recognize the key, that's okay, because there's a new network adapter. Hit yes, and then I will connect using the password. And bam, we are connected via SSH on wireless network. We're there. Okay, so now for the boring stuff, and then I have to run and get cookout. I'm gonna run the command sudo apt-get update, which is gonna pull all the latest file packages and then hit enter, and then I'm gonna get my keys because I have to run, and I'll be right back. Now that that's done, I will run the command sudo apt-get upgrade to install those latest updates, and then press enter. Then once this command comes up, I will say yes to accept all the new updates, and now it's going, yay. Okay, I'm off to go get cookout. If you don't have cookout where you live, you're missing out, it's awesome. Catch you guys tomorrow. So it's a new day. To recap where we are, I backed up my data off my SD card, I formatted it, and I installed Raspbian and Jesse, and I set up Wi-Fi. Now I've moved it downstairs where I want it, and now we're ready to basically start playing with Home Assistant. Next thing I need to do is to install Home Assistant. They've made this really easy. If you go to the Home Assistant website, getting started, all-in-one installer, you just grab this wget command right here. In case you don't know, once you install Home Assistant, it'll start running by itself. You can access it by going to your web browser and typing in your IP address of your Pi, and then colon, and then 8123. That's the port that Home Assistant by default runs on. The Home Assistant configuration files are in home forward slash has forward slash dot Home Assistant. The dot means it's a hidden folder, so in order to find it, you're going to have to go to your WinSCP settings, or however you're accessing your Pi's files, and allow it to see hidden files and folders. I'm going to show you a shortcut with Samba in a second. Okay, so grab the wget command, putty, connect to my Pi wirelessly. I'm going to run that wget command and hit enter. And now this guy's going to run for a long time. So this is new. So I guess Jonathan updated the all-in-one script. That adds kind of clutch because now the installer knows my login password so it can restart the Pi as many times as it needs without needing me to sit here and babysit it. Okay, so it looks like this thing finally finished. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. Restart my putty instance for login information. Okay, and we're connected. Cool. Here's the real moment of truth. Let's see if we can connect to Home Assistant. I'm going to go to Chrome and then connect to my Raspberry Pi's IP address and then port 8123 and then hit enter. And it's alive! You seriously don't know how much you missed your home automation system until you take it away. Okay, so now that we got Home Assistant set up, the next thing I wanna do is to set up Samba. Samba lets me map my Raspberry Pi as a network drive on my Windows computers. It makes editing and configuration files and any files on the Pi super easy. I'll go back to Putty and then I'll type the command sudo apt-get install Samba. Yeah, I will say yes and then hit enter. Now that Sam is done installing, I'm gonna go ahead and configure it. To do that, I'll type the command sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash samba forward slash smb.config. Now, you can change the things in here that you want if you'd like to read through it. What I like to do because I'm lazy is I'll just clear all this out 
and then I will paste the configuration I've used like a million times. The Samba configuration information I use is what I have below in the video description. This configuration is pretty straightforward. Um, but basically what you need to know is the NetBIOS name is the device name you're going to see when you're scanning for network drives. The path is the folder that your Samba share is going to be linked to. The rest of this information basically says anybody can access it and any device or file that's in there anybody can create or delete or add to. That makes working with shares super easy. If you're on a public network, this is not advisable. I'm doing this on a home network where everybody on my network can do whatever they want. So now that we have changed the configuration, I'll hit Control X and then Y and then Enter. Now I will restart Samba by doing sudo service. Oh, just kidding. The command is sudo service smbd restart. One quick thing I forgot to mention here is that I need to create a username and a password that can access the Samba share. To do that, I'll use the command sudo smb password, that's p-a-s-s-w-d, dash a pi, type a password, and then once I do that, I will restart the standard service. Now that that's done, I will go back and I will search for new network devices, and it shows up with the Raspberry Pi, it'll let me connect. But uh One thing I'll mention here is, you remember that Samba config, how we said we wanted the net BIOS name to be HA, and then it's saying Raspberry Pi here? Well, basically what's happening is the Raspberry Pi is a default NetBIOS name, and that's Raspberry Pi. So if you wanted to show up in your network devices as something else, you need to change it. This is really important if you have multiple Pis and have crazy configurations and stuff. The way you change your NetBIOS name is use the command sudo nano etc hostname, and you see how it says Raspberry Pi? I can change this to HA, and then I'll save it, control X, Y, enter, and then I will say sudo reboot. It's important that the NetBIOS name in your Samba share configuration and your NetBIOS name for your Pi match. If not, I've seen weird things happen where like it'll flip flop between different like names and then your computer doesn't know what's going on and it's ugly. So, okay, that's back up pretty quick. Log back in. That's a good sign. Now let's search for new network devices. And there it is, HA. Dun, dun. It's asking for credentials this time. Pi and then my password and it lets us connect. So easy. What else? Ah, let's encrypt and duck DNS. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go to my router settings. I'm going to go to my port porting page. I'm going to create two new rules. I'm going to forward port 80, port 443 to my Raspberry Pi. Turn both of these on and then I will hit save changes. What that does is it allows external network connections to connect to my Pi. So the next thing I need to do is to start let's encrypt and duck DNS. So first, I will create a new folder, make directory duckdns, move into that folder. Next, I'm going to go to the duckdns website, log in. Because I move, actually I have to create a new domain. I want to make sure I link it to my public IP address. So I need to go back to my router settings and check what that is. I will go to install pi, then I'll use that vi command, copy this string. Okay, so here's the sequence here. You hit the vi.duck.sh command, hit enter. Now. You press I, then you right click and you paste the string from the duckdns.org website, and then you press escape colon WQ exclamation point and enter. That's the sequence. What? It's so weird. I don't understand why that sequence is what it is, but that's how you create that shell script. Next, I'll use a chmod command to change access to that script. I'll create an instance in the cron tab manager. I will use a cron tab dash e, and then I will select number two, which is the nano editor. And then I'll scroll all the way down to the bottom of this, and I will paste the following command, which is at the links that I'm going to put in the video description, if not in the video description. Then I'll hit control X, and then Y, and then enter. Next, we're going to test to make sure that the script works by running the script. And that's basically dot forward slash duck dns dot sh. Hit enter. That looks like it's doing something, which is, that's a good sign. And then, now we can check to make sure that the duck dns script worked by running the command cat duck dot log. And then press enter. And it says okay, right here. That means it worked. That's just good. The last thing we'll do is we will start the cron tasks by saying sudo service cron start. So, if it's not clear to you, DuckDNS is reporting your public IP address to the DuckDNS service on a regular interval. Some internet service providers have dynamic IP addresses assigned to its users. That basically means if your public IP address changes for any reason, the DNS server knows about it automatically, and you can connect to your Pi, no problem. 
even if your IP address changes. Pretty cool. Okay, so the last thing we need to set up is Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt lets us connect to Home Assistant using HTTPS, which is encrypted and secured so people on the same network can't listen to the things you're sending back and forth. Score. So first, I need to change back to the root directory. Then I'm going to run the command git clone HTTPS. Yeah, you can read it. Navigate inside the Let's Encrypt folder. And then, which is basically this, except I'm going to replace my email address with my email address and my domain name. Hit enter. Now it's asking how it would like me to authenticate the script. So I will go down to number two. Okay. It's going to ask if I agree to the term of service. Of course. Nice. So now there's two more things we need to do. First, we need to switch our port forwarding rules back. Port 443 to port 8123. Then I will turn off this other port forwarding rule I had temporarily set up. And I'll hit save. Now, the last thing we need to do to make Home Assistant play well with the encryption is to go to the Home Assistant configuration file, which is in that home has.homeassistant folder. And then under HTTP, I will create an API password. I will change this to where my certificates are. And then I'll go back to putty, restart the pie. Now that I'm thinking about this, I just remembered that I forgot a command. It's this last command, the chmod command. Basically, it means that anybody can access that certificate file. So I will go ahead and log back in to putty. So to chmod-r777 edc let's encrypt. Now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and restart my Pi one more time. So if that worked, next time we open Chrome, I will go to HTTPS. The S is clutch. The duck DNS domain. And then hit enter. And hopefully it takes us to Home Assistant. And we're connected to Home Assistant. This password, it's beautiful. Now we've started from the ground up. We've installed Home Assistant on a Pi. We set up Samba, we did it wirelessly, we have Let's Encrypt and DuckDNS set up. So now we are ready to get rolling with the fun stuff, thank goodness, as boring as... Yeah, if you have any questions about this, I know I've covered basically all of this, so this is nothing new to you guys, but if you have any questions, especially if this is your first time going through it and you're stuck or whatever, let me know in the comments. Happy to help as much as I can. I'm getting a lot more comments than I've ever gotten before, which is totally awesome. I feel bad that I'm not able to be more helpful to some people, but... Hopefully getting more videos out and just kind of helping that way will be more useful. So, yeah. As always, thanks for checking out the channel. And, yeah. Happy automating.